up and we are here live this morning for the morning joe bipartisan health challenge and we have a lot of friends here with us of oh course. my gosh the great pat buchanan oh, is here the great uh, but also with us republican congressman john shattuck from arizona and democratic congressman jim clyburn from south carolina he is the majority whip welcome guys New York also Magazine, john oh, heilman yeah. john heilman still with us the best-selling author his book now selling more than the gutenberg bible congratulations <laughs> <laughs> Rich man, we have a lot. To, we have a lot to talk about today, yes, we and we're going to be talking about health when we're forced to. But let's no, talk politics. No, it's something we can agree on, let's right, talk gentlemen? Politics yeah. right Thank now. You, Shattig. So, John Shattig, uh, we've been talking this morning. There's a big debate, and we're talking about one candidate, but it's really a bigger debate about the Republican Party and where it's going. Uh, Christine McDonald wins in Delaware, O'Donnell. and she O'Donnell, O'Donnell. I'm sorry, and she uh, this McDonald uh, person O'Donnell. has a checkered right. checkered past uh, personally. Uh, regarding her bio and her finances, but it seems like Republicans are saying we don't care. Hey, Joe, you and I were Tea Party before Tea Party was cool. The people are fed up with Washington, and they'll take anybody that's willing to go out there and campaign against Washington. And she did it, and she struck a chord. And the establishment Republican Party better wake up and listen. You say the establishment Republican Party, but Mike Castle, did he not? You're a shrewd political analyst. Did he not have a better chance to pick up a seat for the Republican Party in that state? Well, did he this year? And and is that the issue for the people? What the people, the people out there, across America aren't care they don't care whether we win the majority back here they care that this government represents them and right now they don't think it does I, w- I want to go to you Pat because okay. Okay. you know Pat you whooped uh, when she won you said and yet <laughs> Shelley did too and yet there will be some time in a year or two if Democrats maintain control of the Senate by one vote that a Supreme Court nomination mm-hmm. is going to come up and instead of having um, Orrin Hatch, chairman of the Judiciary Committee, you'll have a senator from Vermont. Leahy, will you be whooping at that point that Mike Castle is not there to cast a vote with Republicans? Uh, no, because frankly, I think that's one of the, one of the big issues <laughs> so, as the next Supreme Court nominee, and you'll have a real battle on that. But that, but that's that but is you, but, less likely that Republicans will control know, that debate now. But this is what you mean. The Washington folks here, the establishment, as the congressman said, they said, look, this is a better shot if we take Mike Castle than them. But they're not the ones that decide anymore. The people out in Delaware, all those good folks came out and didn't come back. They said, look. You're not going to tell us who our nominee is going to be. I understand that. With our problems, we like this gal. And, Joe, that kind of fire and enthusiasm. I remember Democrats have always said, look, you know, the easiest one to beat are these conservative characters like Reagan and these other folks. And very often, because of the energy and fire they can generate, they might not get the liberal votes. They do get a lot of these conservatives and independents. But energy and fire are one thing. But can you, are you just, are you completely able to avoid all these other things in her past you know, that you would bring up in someone else? Congressman Clyburn and I are about the same age, and he remembers Fat Domino's song, Yes, It's Me and I'm in Love Again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear oh, Lord, Pat. Oh, dear Lord. Bring it up, Pat wow. Domino. Well, let's talk about compromise on the Hill, uh, Congressman, because you are the majority whip. You've got to count the votes. Yesterday, Steny Hoyer obviously hearing from a lot of Democrats in the South and the Midwest. We don't want to raise taxes right now. We don't want to be seen as raising taxes right now. Let's extend the Bush tax cuts a year or two. Do we have a compromise coming up on that issue? Well, I've been hearing that, but I think what we see happening is that uh, when you go district by district, uh, you get one uh, result. Uh, If you look at the country uh, as a whole, uh, uh, this uh, proposal that the president has put forward uh, is very, very popular. 59, 60 percent of the American people uh, say they are for it. Now, when you start going uh, to each congressional district, right. then you're getting a different uh, result. And, and that's your concern. That's yes. Stinney's concern. We Absolutely. have somebody like Piriello, and I don't know if he's involved with this, saying, I've, I've walked the plank on health care. I've walked the plank on cap and trade. I cannot walk the plank on taxes. 
You guys have to listen to them and say, OK, we'll compromise with the Republicans, right? Uh, uh, absolutely. We listen to our, all of our members out there. I spent uh, pretty much all day Sunday with Perry Yeah. And, and I can tell you, he is very well connected uh, to his oh, congressional district. Can, great candidate. And, and of yeah. course, we are going to listen to what, uh, what he has to say about it. But I, I feel real good uh, about us coming out with something that the American people will be very, very supportive of. John Heilman, it sounds like peace is breaking out on taxes. We may see the tax cuts extended for a year or two. Well, it sounds like that's the case, but I, I, I want to, it does sound that way, Joe. I, my question, though, for you, Congressman, is, you know, before, We're gonna if, compare if, in the crap. absence of compromise, this seemed like an issue that, you, as you say, the, the, the country seemed to be on the president's side. This was a, a one of the few issues that the Democratic Party had to use against Republicans was this class warfare notion. What, what is the Democratic Party going to do politically if it gives, if it, if it does come to a compromise, if it does extend these tax cuts, even for the wealthiest Americans, what, what does the party have left to run on? Well, we have a lot to run on because we are, in fact, as we said from the very beginning, that we are going to give a tax cut cut to everybody. It's just your first $250,000. Remember, the very wealthy people will benefit from that as well. And so I, I do believe uh, that uh, the proposal uh, that the president put forth is something that we can solidly run on, and the American people will understand uh, if you get to the point of a compromise. John, it does help Democrats in swing districts in trouble if they can go forward saying we were able to vote for R&D tax, tax cr credits. We were able to vote to allow businesses to buy more equipment and not pay taxes on them. Uh, and then we didn't raise taxes on small businesses. We extended it two years out. Doesn't that help Democrats? I think uh, that would help Democrats if they get there. Uh, that, right now, I see no evidence of them getting there. Because, frankly, I think right now they're talking about going home at the end of next week or maybe at the end of the following week without doing any of those things, in which case they will have raised taxes on every single American. They will have raised the marriage penalty or reinstituted it. They will have reimposed the uh, uh, child tax credit or doubled it. No, no, no. Just explain. These are tax cuts These that are were all... put in place under Bush. If they expire, then they're that's what you're saying. They Democrats, automatically Right now, go I think up. they're planning on going home without dealing with these issues, in which case they will have raised taxes. And I'm going to look forward Jim, to uh, Republicans running on the fact that they've raised taxes on not just the rich, but on everybody. Jim, you guys are going to probably have to have a vote, aren't you? Because if well, they I just expire, then people I, like Piriello are in trouble. I think of all that I hear from the senators direct, they are going to do a, a, a tax uh, vote today, uh, and we are going to do uh, a make it uh, work in America a vote on the House today. And I hope John will vote for that. We are going to. You're not going to uh, vote on that today in the House, though, uh, on, this, on these tax issues. Not the tax not issues. Not on this week. No, no. I, I said in the Senate. And I said in the House, you're going to vote on making it in America stuff, creating jobs, bringing down energy. Well, you're not talking about cost. the tax cut bill. You're talking about a, uh -huh. a, a produce goods in America bill, a no, uh, American-made bill, I'm not, not, not this, ta I'm not this tax bill. I'm telling you, we're going to do some things before we go home that I think you are, uh, you should be voting for. And, and John, for that, John, John let me ask do? you this, sir, John. So if, if, what you what, better what, do what? is the tax extenders. You better extend the tax cuts or you're raising what? taxes on middle class what? Americans and lower Americans. Let me right. ask you about your calendar here. When will these taxes expire? Hey, the American people, all they understand when is. When do it, they expire? They do not they expire. They expire January 1. So if we go exactly home before right. January 1. So, so if we go home okay, before November, that's what I'm saying. Hold on, hold on, one at a time. One at a time. Trust me. Hey, John, no. John, hold on. One at a time. Yeah. Make your point, so and then, John, the you respond. So the point is, we do have until December 31st to deal with this. And so if you go home in two weeks, you're telling me the taxes will go up before Election Day? The American people have got the same calendar that I've got. John, and I we've got plenty of time to do that. Shadding. I love going to the end of this election with Democrats having raised taxes by not acting. If they want to go home and say, trust us, we will later, you know, trust us. We know they're going up January 1. Right. We didn't reduce them or, or put, keep them in place so they don't go up before Election Day. But trust us, we'll fix it between Election Day and January 1. Pat, Pat let's have some lame duck session here, aren't yeah, you, lame, Congressman? Lame That's exactly session. what I'm talking here. And I think that uh, John knows that. The fact of the matter is we do not have to touch Bush's tax cuts before we go home. And, and then the taxes will burden. go up. Uh, no, on, 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 Jan on January the first, hey, you're going to have that argument. To run on a basis of trust okay. us. So, so John, John Heilman, let's talk about where this going is going because I really do believe that the White House will be put in a position where they're going to have to extend the tax cuts, all the tax cuts, for maybe a year or two until the economy turns around. It's in a terrible position. And by the way, that's Keynesian in and of itself. That is a Keynesian move to cut taxes in the time of 
of a, a great recession. Um, if the president does that, does that just cause an absolute all out revolt on the far left? Well, I think that uh, probably not. If you can, if you if you extend only a couple of years, uh, with the intention of, of 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 eventually repealing them, I think if you have and a that's what Orzag said we need right, to do. I, I, yeah, there's enough extend a he, couple of years, but then end all and the then, tax and then, cuts. And, and, and right, exactly. And I Even think the that's, middle class. that's the cover, and that's the signal they will send to the left is just to say, look, this is what we have to do right now. There are a lot of vulnerable Democrats who want to see this done. We have to do it temporarily, and we'll get around to 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 to, to getting well, to a sane fiscal posture later down the road. Pat? You know what the problem with that? I, look, I would favor that going two years for the extend all the tax cuts. But you get to 2012, 2013 in the presidential election and guys are going to say, you're going to let all those middle class tax cuts disappear? No. The Congress will have to start going right back into the same argument again, right, Congressman Shadow? I think so. I think sure, you'll be right back in it, Joe. You, you got to you gotta give Bush credit for ex- having these things expire <laughs> when he did. Why don't you guys extend it until, say, October 31st, 2012. Exactly. And then, see, it's going to let him expire. Oh, wait. Hey, let, let, me, let me ask you, Congressman. Once, uh, again, you're the majority whip. You hear, you, you hear all of these concerns. You live in a southern state. You're in a safe district, but South Carolina, obviously, a very conservative state. Um, what, do you, what do you hear from Democrats? What's their biggest concern right now as they go out there in a year that looks like it's going to be a very Republican year? Well, the concern is all about jobs. Uh, people are really concerned about getting uh, back to work. And we are, in fact, doing a pretty good job of that. It's not as fast as we would like. Uh, it's not as plentiful as we would like. But we're not hemorrhaging. We have stopped the hemorrhaging. We are now growing. And the fact is, uh, people, more people are at work today than, than were uh, two weeks ago, and in two weeks there'll be more. And yep. by election day, uh, I think uh, people will see that we're on the right glide path. All right, gentlemen, thank you for being on the show this morning. You, now, are you going to walk the walk, Shattuck? I'm going to run. You're going to yeah, run, baby. With me, oh, yeah, talk to Governor Christie, we're right? Just yeah. running out here. Here. <laughs> Governor Christie and I have actually something else planned. Okay. You, you walking? Yes, Jim? I am. I got my. I love it. Oh, I love it. Hey, All right. I got a golf cart. No. <laughs>